trees. They just might be the most important plants on earth. Not only are they big and beautiful with leaves, flowers, and gorgeous bark, but they take the bite out of pollution. They remove carbon dioxide and give us oxygen, improve water quality, and prevent erosion. Not only that, but the Ag Department says one tree is equal to 10 room size air conditioners running 20 hours a day in the summer. Hi, I'm Ann Jagger for the Oregonian Homes and Gardens of the Northwest, here with some tree tips. How to pick the right tree for your yard and some expert suggestions about which tree to plant. Our expert is award-winning Oregonian garden writer Kim Picorni. She loves studying trees. Kim's talk, 10 Trees Under 25 Feet, is popular on the lecture circuit. Be choosy when you're picking a tree. I like to go way beyond the foliage. Um, you can think about flowers which bloom all year round, um, the fall color, and of course my favorite, the bark. But you want to know the basics before you get started. Think about these three tree characteristics. Height, will the mature tree hit power lines or grow too tall for your space? Width, how wide will the canopy spread out? And what shape of tree do you want? Round, V-shape, tall, or skinny? Once you've figured out the size and the shape of your tree, it's time to have some fun browsing books and the internet for your favorites. Fortunately, we have Kim here with us and she's already done all the work. I sure have. I'm gonna share with you my top five favorite small trees. Right at the top of my list, I think, is strawberry tree. It really looks great year-round. It's got great bark. It's evergreen. The flowers are very nice, um, but the best thing about it is the fruit, which turn from yellow to red. The only winter-blooming tree I have on my list is witch hazel, which is also considered a tall shrub. Um, it has these great red or yellow flowers that remind me of hula skirts. Very That's cute. really my favorite part of it, but they also have great fall color. Crepe myrtle, which traditionally has been considered a hot weather plant and up till now has done best in the south from Florida on up. But new varieties, which have been named after Native American tribes, do really well in the northwest. And best of all, they bloom in fall when lots of other things are not blooming. So look for crepe myrtles that are named things like Cherokee and Arapaho and you'll get the best of the best. Now Kim's picks will all grow about 25 feet, but it's a good idea that you find out what the mature height of the tree is going to be and how fast it will grow because some trees are very slow growers and ideally we'd like the tree to mature while we're still young enough to enjoy it. That's a great point, Anne. Another thing is that you really need to consider when you're planting a tree in the parking strip next to the street that you probably need to get a permit. So be sure to contact the city. Really? Yes. <laughs> Speaking of the city, the birch bark cherry is one of the trees I had to get a permit for, and it was worth it. This is a tree that is at the top of my list, and it's all about bark. Bark, bark, bark. Oof. <laughs> In all seriousness, the birch bark cherry has the most magnificent bark. It is smooth, mahogany, and it just shines in the light. Okay, Kim saved one of the best for last. Japanese snowbell, particularly the variety snow cone, is a gorgeous tree. It's just covered in flowers in June, but plant it someplace where you can look up at it because the flowers do droop down. Okay, so Kim has given us her top five trees under 25 feet. Not, not dollars, right? That's for sure. <laughs> Next week, she'll show us how to plant a tree properly. For the Oregonian Homes and Gardens of the Northwest, I'm Ann Jagger. I hope our paths, our garden paths, cross again soon. Thanks, Kim. Anytime.